Xcode 16.3 is out, but you need the latest version of Mac OS, or at least a more recent version than I have. Um, so if we go into system settings, I am on what? Uh, was that 15.1.1? And what version is available? Let's find out. So, oh, 15.4. I'm that far behind? Wow. Okay. I guess I need to do an update. It's been a while. Um, so this brings with it Swift 6.1. And I think if you're going to incorporate 6.1, you're going to need... Well, you'll at least get a lot of different things. So what's what's included? What are the highlights? Well, this is all of the highlights. Um, we're getting Sequoia 15.4, which is what this was, right? 15.4. So that's the latest one. And so this update adds the processor trace instrument for hardware analysis of CPU execution on supported Apple Silicon devices. I think that's only M4 chips, actually. I don't think that's all of them. And then it adds support for testing GameKit leaderboards and achievements locally. Uh, that's useful. And then add support for JSON 5. This is a big one. This hasn't been available in the source editor. So that's something you'll be able to have comments, I believe, in your JSON files. And provides bug fixes and improved stability. So let's take a look at what that looks like. This just came out five days ago. And... Um, what are people saying? Most recent. Stop the forced updates. Uh, so these people just need to install Xcode as a separate one. So what you can do is you can install it side by side, grab it from the development center and just label it so you know which version it is and you can have it not automatically update. So this one has not automatically updated because I haven't updated my Mac OS version. Um... Apparently it's crashing for a bunch of people, but it's only four over the last four days. So maybe I don't want to update. I don't know. Okay, so that is that. I'm not going to update right now. Uh, and I guess I'm not going to demo anything except sort of talking through some of the release notes. So let's take a look at the release notes. I'm at xcodereleases.com. If we go to release notes, we can see what is new. Can I hide this? And the big thing is that it's going to have all these versions. I typically ignore all of that. Um, apparently, it has a minimum requirement, uh, which I didn't know. So I am behind the times. So what did they fix? Some missing tool. I've never used that. Known issues. So apparently downloading the predictive. I turned this off. I don't use this. I, I found it super distracting. So if you're using that, comment down below if you like it or not. Um, I think it distracts me from what I'm writing. Uh, we've got some app intense fixes, some C-Lang stuff. So there's a bunch of new stuff in here for C++. Um, so you can annotate C++ methods. There's a whole slew of things. We get a lot more C++ 26 features that have been implemented. So that's a whole slew of things. You can open up any one of these and they're like describing how that feature works. Um, the build system. Uh, making it use less memory. But that's just talking about the validation, validating embedded binaries. I don't really know what that means. Maybe it was skyrocketing. We look at the C line compiler, new features. So there's some new target OS things. And then we've, did I jump backwards somehow? I think I jumped backwards. Weird. I think I clicked on a heading and somehow went back. Um, so we got new. C++ standard library stuff, C line compiler, like this concatenating strings. And then I think strings are easier to interoperate with. It looks like there's different C++ version stuff. So we got 23, 20. The mothership has landed. <laughs> Do we need to look at this one? Yeah, I don't, 
I don't know what that's talking about. Um, I know C++, but I haven't kept up with all the new changes in C++. Build system. I feel like we keep seeing the same thing. It keeps taking us back up. So a bunch of things were deprecated for C++. CarPlay, new simulator stuff. Backup camera has been added. Debugging, rendering, LLDB is improved. Maybe that will help. I think I saw something about improving the time for LDP to start. Uh, let's see what else is in here. So, man, I keep clicking on things I shouldn't click. I should not click on anything. It takes me right back up to the top. Wow. So this is the new trace thing. This is only available on M4 Mac, M4 iPad, and iPhone 16, 16 Pro. It requires some additional configuration. So that's interesting, but not available for everyone. So just this is all related to instruments, new features and in instruments. They're fixing a bunch of things. And then interface builder, uh, they fix iPhone 16 E not appearing localizations has some changes and some fixes. Resolve some issue importing a module and a playground. Predictive code completion. I don't really care about this feature. Previews. This is probably a more important one to actually read. Um, sometimes it looks like you had to trigger a build to get an error to disappear in a preview. So keep that in mind if you're on 16.2. Um, I don't know if anything is important here, just some fixes. Apparently the simulator was discarding key up events when you had the command key held down. So that might've been impacting you. Yeah. New feature, Xcode JSON. Um, I think that's a big feature. So in the source editor, just being able to see comments in JSON files and getting it to correctly highlight. So that's kind of new. And what else do we have? Some known issues with Swift. So this is this is the other big highlight for this release, I would say. 16.3 adds a bunch of Swift and C++ interoperability. So you can call C++ functions that use the char 8 underscore T type from Swift. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff supporting integrating um, map and unordered map into a Swift dictionary. So like just this interoperability, I think is really important if you are doing Swift and C++ development, calling into it. Um, so that's pretty big. Test report has some new suggestions. I don't know what that's talking about. There was some new stuff for test automation. I remember seeing something about it. 
Um, they're moving frameworks around. So XC test APIs, they're rearranging stuff, I think, to better support like decoupling the Swift tool chain. I'm not entirely certain. Or they want to like reconfigure um, some of this. Maybe, maybe they want to take the core functionality of XC test. and separate it for those on Linux so that you can actually use XC test on Linux. Um, Swift testing gets some scope traits, which allows you to run logic before and after tests. It's kind of like a setup and tear down, but you could then specify it here in this syntax. I don't know if this is really better. It's just something, it's just another way of doing stuff. Um, it does require a little bit of setup, and you could just have a setup and a teardown. I think the benefit is if you're doing the same thing across tons of different files, something like this allows you to sort of just do it once and provide it to the test um, with a scope trait. What is this? So when using a swift.org toolchain, Xcode now prefers the copy of Swift testing in the toolchain for building and running tests if one is available for the current platform. Prefers the copy. As opposed to what else would it do? Use the Xcode version? I'm not entirely certain what that means. This is the other big one I, I saw is the XC test UI recording has been enhanced to offer a more refined generative process when capturing application events. This feature is also for recording any application, not just the application under development. XC test UI recording is available for all platforms except Vision OS. So whatever that means. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this part, this is the most important part. So you could potentially do other things, like maybe kill the simulator and start it up again. I don't know. Um, that might be useful. If I, I know that like at GoPro, we had a test harness on top of everything written in Python that could do things that weren't possible in just XC test UI testing. So that could be super useful where you need to rejigger something outside of the test environment. Uh, anything else interesting here? Looks like you can share variables across workflows and use them in your build scripts in XC Cloud. That's kind of big if you've got multiple projects or apps that you're building. And then we've got some new additions to the XC result tool. Um, this is a uh, testing. This is all related to uh, test results. So a bunch of new things and that is it. And then some parts are deprecated. So it looks like they're removing some stuff. You'll still be able to access them with a legacy flag and they will be removed in the future. So you can it sounds like they won't work without the legacy flag, which is interesting. So they're changing some of that. So if you have build scripts on top of it, um, yeah. So that's Xcode 16.3. Um, some of this stuff is interesting. Some of it is just like little bug fixes. Um, big takeaways are um, I think the, I'm, to be honest, the UI testing stuff is interesting. So being able to potentially do other things with other apps, I don't know how that's going to shake out, but let me know in the comments down below if any of these are interesting, if um, I skipped over something that you think is really important or cool. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching and have a great day.